Today is going to be a video all about an oldie but a goodie to help you as you are configuring your Dynamics 365 CRM or customer engagement system. And what I want to talk about are business rules. This is part of a slide deck that I have prepared to accompany my academy class that was held at Community Summit last week in San Antonio. And uh, the students got really excited about business rules and learning about it. And I thought it was a great time to remind you of all of the really cool things you can do with business rules. So business rules is involving some simple form logic that you'd apply without writing custom code or plugins and applying it to the form. They're really simple to configure. They run in real time. That means when the condition is met, your business will, rule will run. And the screenshot here is showing you all of the available actions in your toolkit. We are going to look at a bunch of these in specifics, but first let's talk about some of the important things. Number one is your scope. It's really important to understand the scope in which your business rule is set. It's in the top right hand corner when you're creating your business rule. First option is entity. That means this business rule is being pinged at the server level. So it's going to trigger any time there is a create or an update of data on that table. So that includes during your data imports. That can be really helpful if you want this business rule to run when you're uploading new leads, for example, if it's on a lead table. Then we have all forms. Um, I use all forms as my scope for most of my business rules. Why? Because this is running on the client side, which is inside of the browser. And this business rule will apply to all forms, including your main forms or your quick create forms. Finally, you have your single, <laughs> single form, which you would specify. Uh, so that business rule will only run on the specified form for the table. So once you have applied your scope, we can dive into creating your business rule. But this is like your warning, warning. Business rules and custom code do not play nice on the same form. Um, ask me how I know this because I did this once and things got funky. Save yourself the time and just follow this best practice tip. If you need to implement business rule logic on a form where you already have custom code, you should not be using business rules. Just have your developer add what you're trying to do with a business rule in custom code. That said, we're going to move on to some really cool business rule actions. First is lock and unlock. So once a condition has been met, we're either going to lock a field or unlock it. So this prevents you from having read only in all scenarios. If maybe you want to read only field in certain scenarios, but once a condition is met, you'd like to unlock that field and let people edit it. That's when you could use this for make sure you configure this for both the yes and the no pass, the true and the false, just in case that condition is changed and you want to lock the field again. Next up is set required. I think this is the most used and well understood of all the business rule actions. So you will configure your condition. Once it's met, you can either set a field as required or not required. So this is showing you an example of an organization that tracks leads that are both commercial and residential. And maybe when my commercial, when my lead is commercial, I want to set all of the business centered fields as required. And if it's residential, I don't need those fields. So those are not required. Really helpful in getting the data that you need from your users when they're ready to give it to you and prevent that overhead of having too many required fields on your form at the time of data entry, which of course will not help with user adoption. Next, we have set visibility. This is another cool one that I think is well used and well understood as well. This is very similar to the one we just talked about. However, you're going to hide those fields once the condition is met. So carrying over the same use case, when it's a residential lead, I can hide all of those company centric fields and just show users the information that they need for the, spe the specific lead that they're looking at, for example. All right, now, set field value. So I know this says set a field value, but one of my favorite use cases is here, which is actually to clear a field value. So that's the example we have here. Specifically, my condition has been configured that when an opportunity status reason is moved to on hold, I want to make sure to clear the estimated close date because obviously it's not relevant anymore. So you can use that with set field value. Also, instead of clearing a value, you certainly could use the same action to specify and set a field value. 
powerful business rule actions that a lot of people aren't using, and that is show error message. So this one, you would configure the condition, which you can see here. I have added a couple of different scenarios and grouped it with and logic. You can also use or logic in your business rules. But I'm looking for an estimated close date that has value. I'm looking for a probability greater than or equal to 75% and when estimated revenue is blank. So when all three of those things happen, then I configure my show error message action, which you can see on the right here with the green arrow. So simply I'm going to tie the field that the error message will show on and I will configure what the error message will say. And that will er stop your users from going forward until they provide that data, but only when you need to. And moving on to really cool business rules that people don't use, add recommendation. This is a light recommendation, but this will prompt my user to add field to apply data based on the recommendation action that I configure. So in my conditional here, I'm looking for if the account country is set to the USA, my add recommendation is simply, hey, you might want to set your shipping method as the U.S. Postal Service. So that's another very simple thing to configure. Your users will see something that looks like this below screenshot. They'll actually just see this lightning, this light bulb icon. When they click on that icon, it's going to show them what the recommendation is. And then when they click the apply button, that will apply that action. If they don't want to do that, they can just ignore it. It's just a recommendation and override it. So this is a cool one that you could maybe use to help all of your users. So I hope this is a helpful overview of some of the cool things that you can do with business rules.